All right, everybody. Hey, this is like my first YouTube video, so maybe cut me some slack, like the videos that I'm making for YouTube. So, yeah, just cut me some slack. It's Mathis. Bubble Mech Show just wrapped up here. We're trying to cover this Brennan Schofield, Brian Deegan claiming thing from all angles, uh, talk to all the people and get to the bottom of this. And, and if you listen to the Bubble Mech Show 515, then you may have heard some of it. And we had Donnie Luce from Yamaha coming on. Matt Walker called in. Uh, so those are two principals that were involved in it. I spoke to Brennan Schofield as well on the phone uh, a few days ago. And uh, I talked to Brian Deegan on Monday of the show. He spoke to me. Brian um, uh, didn't want to come on the show, but certainly reiterated some of his points that he wanted me to get across. And, man, I mean, I got to look from the very first part of this. The rule is there. It makes sense. I think that Brennan Schofield should have the bike. I, I think that as of right now, I, I, he should have the bike. That's the rules. He put the money up. That's the bottom line. Where he got the money from doesn't matter. If this motor guy put the motor money up, who cares? Brennan could take the, the Star Racing Yamaha and drive it off a cliff, ride it off a cliff. It doesn't matter. Uh, it's all fine. And I think Brian, uh, Brennan Schofield sorry, should have the motorcycle. It's that simple. It didn't happen. For a variety of reasons, Jason Wygant, who I know and trust, talked to Bobby Reagan, the owner of Star Racing Yamaha, and Bobby said the team was ready to let the bike go. Uh, something happened in the meantime. Brennan Schofield uh, made the claim, paid the money, spoke to Tim Cotter of MX Sports, spoke to, to, spoke to the AMA Mike Burkeen as well, paid the money, made the claim, and it was good to go. It should have in my opinion, ended right there. But as we know from Brennan Schofield's interviews, he, he talked a lot about what was going on and, uh, uh, you know, the threats of Yamaha taking the dealership away. Chris from uh, Rally E Motorplex in New Brunswick, I believe. Chris is the owner of that dealership. I've tried to contact him, left him numerous voicemails. Michael Lindsay from Vital did get a statement from him, so you can go check out Vital MX for that. Uh, here's what Brennan says. He got persuaded to drop the claim, the claim as we know, uh, and, and and the Chris from Motorplex was threatening to take the ride down, take the ride away, take the support away. Uh, he didn't make the claim, and then here's here's Brennan talking about you know right now where the state he's in right now as of a couple of days ago about this dealership. I also just got my ride taken away because of this whole so, thing. So as of right now, your dealership is even though you dropped the claim, your sponsor is saying that we want the bikes and parts back. Yeah, so I don't have any bikes right now, so I gotta gotta try to find find somebody to help me out and get some bikes. So I can go ride a dirt bike like I want to do. So Brennan was on his way back to New Brunswick when I spoke to him to drop the bikes off. Chris at Rally E Motorplex hadn't had the bikes yet, but it doesn't make a lot of sense to me that that Chris would at the ranch. Chris was at the ranch that Chris persuaded Brennan to drop the claim. Brennan dropped the claim. And then as Brennan says there, he still gets the bikes back. Chris is saying that this was a prearranged deal. He was getting the bikes back anyways. So that part of the story checks out as far as Chris's end of things. Because why would he persuade Brennan to drop the claim and then just take the bikes back? So that's a little bit of a sketchy deal. Uh, Brennan getting called back up after making the claim, after paying the money, getting called back up. He said his dad was not around. His dad was uh, looking for water for the uh, washing of the bikes. Brennan should have brought his dad uh, um, up there, um, th without a doubt in my mind. He should have brought his dad up there. He didn't. Uh, I also don't think Tim Carter from MX Sports, who, as Brennan said and told me himself, Tim Carter handled it pretty well. But I don't think Tim Carter should have put him in a room with Brian Deegan, the uh, father of the bike he's trying to claim, the riders who's trying to claim. Uh, Brian's a, you know, a, a big industry guy, very popular. I don't think that's a proper thing to do. Now, Brennan says Tim Cotter and Brian Deegan were in the room. Well, Mike Burkeen says that he was in the room as well. And, and, and Brennan didn't tell me that on the phone. He said it was Tim Cotter and Brian Deegan. And here's, here's Brennan talking about Brian Deegan in the meeting with him. Somebody talked to Brian and Brian was like, or Brian talked to somebody and said, Hey, I want to go have some words with the people that are doing this and just talk to them about it. So 
Brian came up and I was in a room with Tim Cotter and Brian Vegan and myself and they just kept asking me why I was doing it. It was behind it, whose money, why I was doing it and uh, I told them I just wanted what, where was your dad during all this? Why wasn't he there? Uh, that, that's that, that's unfortunate for sure. Yeah, my dad was. Well, I got down the moto. My dad was at the camper, like we were just talking about the moto, and then he was like, "All right, well, I gotta go get water to fill up our water tank so I can pressure wash my bike." And he went to go get water, and I was just sitting there, and my motor guy came over, and he was like, "Hey, man, like awesome moto." all this and i was like dude i got 30 minutes i gotta go up there and see ama i only have 30 minutes to claim this bike and he was like i'll run you up so that's where that part came in about the motor guy but he just came over to congratulate me but he ended up taking me up there to claim hayden's bike my dad was getting water my dad couldn't even find it because he had no idea where the ama building was but so when you they put you in the room who's is it brian or tim do you feel that was more aggressive um, Brian, he was mad. Like he was, he could hear it in his voice. He was mad, and his face was getting red. And like right. he was just like, yeah, he was pretty pissed off about it. And he just kept like he was saying I was going to defame them from YouTube, whatever that's supposed to mean. But I don't know I what that means. Like, yeah, I don't know what that I, means. I, I, said, like, I was like, no, I have respect for you and your kid. Like even though there's been drama in the past, and I was like, I still have respect for you guys. I'm just trying to. I'm just a kid. Playing a dirt bike that's a factory bike, and that's all I want to do is I just want to ride a factory dirt bike. When you say drama in the past, have you had run ins with Hayden or Brian before? Yeah, just uh, we, I don't know, we cleaned each other out at Southwick, and yeah. Okay. It. Yeah, it, so Brian was just, you know, crushing. At this point, though, you're. You're still claiming it. You don't really care, right? Like you're trying to handle yeah, it. And, no, yeah, I, right. yeah, I was, I was going through with it 100. percent I was there to claim the bike, and I was like, "That's what I'm doing." Um, and then he's like, "Well, why are you doing it?" And I said, "I just want to ride a factory bike." I said, "But it doesn't matter." I said, "If it's going to be my bike, I can do whatever I want with it." Yeah, yeah, I agree. Yeah, Brian says. Uh, I guess uh, I've been trying to get a hold of him. Brian says he doesn't didn't know the rule. I guess apparently, which doesn't matter, yeah, but he, he had no idea. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's what he said to me too. But I mean, yeah, I whatever. Read the rule book. <laughs> yeah, so, pretty much. Uh, I, I agree with that. So okay, so uh, but but Cotter, you feel was fine. Tim Cotter was was okay. Um, I mean, he was like, I don't know. He didn't. He was the only person in the building that didn't really seem like at the start, anyways. He didn't seem like he was all for it. But by the end of it, he was cool and like was for it. But at the beginning, he was kind of like. I don't know if we should impound the bike. That's not really fair to them. And then I don't know why. He was the one who sat me down in the room with Brian. Like, he's the one who told me to come in the room with him. So I don't know what that was about. Like, I didn't. Right. Why did I have to talk to Brian about it? I'm just claiming the bike. Yep. Yeah, understandable. So there we go. That's Brennan talking about the deal and what happened. Um, I don't think that should have happened. I like Tim. Tim's a good guy, but doesn't, does, I don't think he should drag him up there uh, to Brian Deegan and everything else. Uh, and but th at that point, Brennan's still claiming the bike. Everything's still fine. Uh, it is when they go back to the Matt Walker uh, carry, Matt Walker Motorhome. Matt called into the Pulp Show. Donnie Loose from Yamaha. Matt Walker having a conversation. They come across uh, Brennan and the motor builder, and they have a discussion about the uh, the the claim. Matt Walker very adamant. Don't do this. It's bad for you. It's a it's a black eye on you. Nobody does this. I don't agree with Matt for saying that, but I can respect that opinion. But that's fine. Matt's sponsor, or sorry, Brennan's sponsor comes in, speaks to the father of Brennan, private conversation. They come back and agree to drop the claim. Donnie Luce from Yamaha uh, does ask him if he wants to, uh, why he wants to make this claim, what's happening. And Brennan explains to him, I want to ride a factory bike. And, and Donnie Luce is like, well, I'm not going to talk him out of it. And in the meantime of all of this talking, Donnie does say, I'm going to give you some stock motors for these motors that are blowing up in your bike. Earlier in the week, the dad and Brennan stopped by Yamaha Support, talk about how they're having problems. I heard there was clutch issues at, at Matt Walker's place as well. They were having clutch issues. They were having motor problems. This had started earlier in the week. Donnie knew that. The dad mentioned it. Donnie promised them motors, and Yamaha is going to give – these motors to Brennan Schofield down the road at some point here shortly. Uh, 
So they are coming through with these motors, what they said they were going to do, but that was not for dropping the claim. According to Donnie, it was already in the works from an earlier visit in the week where the family said they were having problems with motors. Brennan and the dad agree to drop the claim, and we're all good there. But Brennan says that the dealer said, Chris from Rally Motorplex says, Yamaha called him, threatened to take support away, and the dealer said he's got no choice. He needs to drop this claim. Otherwise, he's going to lose his dealership. He's going to lose Yamaha support. This part never made sense to me. Amateur motocross guy in America dealing with a Yamaha dealer in another country. Come on. Taking the bikes away, taking support away. He doesn't have that power. Brennan did say this in a video, not with me, but in an earlier video interview. Here's what I, – I had to get to the bottom of this because I don't believe this. I never believed this for a second. Donnie Luce doesn't have this type of power. Here's Brennan talking about that Yamaha part where he admits that he doesn't really know anybody from Yamaha really did this. So, But for the record, though, we don't know that – we don't know exactly – you and I both don't know – the the dealership exactly told you, how. yeah. The dealership told you Yamaha did it, but it could have been Matt Walker texting your dealership and saying this is what they're going to do. You know what I mean? Like yep. that's the part where it's a little cloudy. We don't exactly know. We know what the dealership told you, and we know, yeah. what, but we don't know how that happened. Yeah, exactly. That's kind of up in the air. We're not sure on that one, right? Because that seems unbelievable. I'm not calling you a liar, Brandon, because I know the dealership told you, but it seems unbelievable. Well, first of all, I think your dealership guy comes across really shitty in this, and that sucks for you guys, for you and your dad. Yeah. That sucks. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Second of all, I, I, you know, I, I just find it hard to believe that Donnie, who I know a little bit, can actually threaten a dealership. That, that seems insane. Uh, but I'm trying yeah. to get to the bottom of it as we speak. So, um, but you know, I know Yamaha USA is not happy, and they're trying to figure out what happened. There was another event at the ranch this week. So communication made it hard to figure out. But So as, Don, as Brennan says, it's up in the air. Who told what? Now, since that interview, Chris at Rally Motorplex has said no one from Yamaha called him. Again, Vital MX, there's a statement there. No one said they're taking bikes away, despite what Brennan said. When I said I... The only thing I could think of to make this reasonable was that Matt Walker might have told the, mo the dealer, hey, they could take your bikes away. Hey, if he does this, this could happen. And hey, this could happen if you do this from Yamaha. Matt Walker has since called in the Pulp Show tonight and said he did not, under any circumstances, mention anything about Yamaha taking bikes away to Chris, the dealer. Brennan says Chris mentioned this. Brennan also says it's up in the air that it was Yamaha. Matt Walker insists it wasn't true. Michael Lindsay has a statement from the dealer saying it wasn't true. And here we are with Brennan Schofield, who tried to play by the rules, and then I think his story's sort of falling apart. I, he seems like a good kid, caught up in the moment of what's going, you know, what 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 happened and why he didn't rock away with the Star Racing Yamaha because you could not believe Matt Walker, then that's fine. You could not believe Chris from Motoplex, and that's fine. You could not believe Donnie Luce from Yamaha, and that's fine. But it doesn't make sense that all these guys are, do are lying, and there's one guy, Brendan Schofield, telling the truth, right? That doesn't make a lot of sense, so... Of course, some, some of you watching this, will, won't, I won't change your mind. It won't matter. But to me, Brennan should have the bike, but Brennan is also not getting his facts straight or outright lying in this situation. I could believe somebody in this chain wasn't, wasn't uh, uh, truthful, but I don't think it was Donnie Luce. Matt Walker made a pretty convincing argument tonight that it wasn't him about the Yamaha dealer. Now, Matt did admit that the motor guy, he did raise his voice with him and did want him to get out of his pit. Whatever. That's a, that's a thing between them. And, and that, doesn't, doesn't, that doesn't matter to Brennan Schofield and claiming this motorcycle. That doesn't matter, right? Matt also insinuated the motor guy put the money up. Brian Deegan insinuated to me today that the motor guy put the money up. 
We had one of Deegan's friends call in and say that Brandon Schofield admitted it wasn't his money. None of that matters. Brandon Schofield had the money. Unless he got it doing something illegal, it doesn't matter. The money was put up, and that's fine. No problem on that. The claim was made. He should have the bike. So everything that Brian's upset about, you know, and Brian also said that there will be more things coming out where Brennan Schofield and Hayden Deegan have a running feud. Brennan admitted me that they cleaned each other out of Southwick. Brian says they were talking crap on Instagram. That doesn't matter either. That's all just amateur motocross drama. you got to separate the noise. What happened? Who's telling the truth? What's going on? What's sensible? Is it sensible that Yamaha USA threatened a dealer in Canada with support or the franchise? No, it is not. For the record, Chris has said they haven't done that. Yamaha Canada said they didn't do that. Yamaha USA said they didn't do that. And I think props to Yamaha USA for the fact that after all of this, Brennan sort of throwing them and dragging them in the mud, even though as Brennan admitted it's up in the air, Yamaha is still coming through with their motors that they promised Brennan Schofield. Again, I, I ride a Yamaha. I'm supported by those guys, but that's facts. And if you think Yamaha could take a dealership away, I'm sorry. I don't think, I don't think you're right. Matt Walker said he didn't say that. The dealer said he didn't say that. Yamaha said they didn't say that. you got three people saying that. And you got a 17-year-old kid that's maybe not being 100% truthful here. So we got all that going on. We got people in the media running with Brennan's statement, which, I mean, some of these people are sponsored by Yamaha also and could make an easy call to someone at Yamaha to get their side of the story, but they chose not to. Other people just want clicks and headlines and half-truths. They don't want to actually put the work in. Michael Lindsay did. I did. This is what I'm thinking. This is what I think happened. This is what's going on. Again, Probably not enough to convince some of you people out there in YouTube land, but you got to call everybody. I'm still pissed that Chris at uh, Rally Motoplex wouldn't call me back, though. Talk to Michael Lindsay, but not me. But, uh, and backing this up even more, you know, Brian did not want this bike to go, in my impression, talking to Brian Deegan today. Thought it was the motor builder. Thought the motor builder was going to take it apart. Thought the kid may take it apart and say the Deegans were cheating because there was already beef between them. None of that matters. The rule is there. Don't build a bike that you could lose. Bobby Reagan told Star, we're ready to lose the bike. Bobby Reagan told Wygant, they're ready to lose the bike. Doesn't seem that way. Brian or Star did not want that bike to be claimed. I don't think they were cheating. I think they were just pissed off. We don't want the bike to be given away. That's it. A lot going on here. I don't know if I got to the bottom of it. I like to think I did. Called and talked to a lot of people and uh, tried to nail this thing down. And, I, I, again, Brandon Schofield should have that bike, and there should be a non-issue. And when Brandon Schofield made the claim, Star Racing and Brian Deegan should have said, take the bike. They didn't. Brandon said some things that weren't true, some things that were. Tim Cotter made a mistake. Not a, not a deadly one. Not one he should go to jail for. Not one he should be fired for. But he made a mistake, in my opinion. And here we are. You can make your mind up by some of the people out there telling one side of the story and some of the things that you want to be true. Or you can actually, you know, read Vital MX for the statements from everybody. I got statements from just about everybody. And you can make your decision on that. I think it's pretty easy, to be honest. I don't think there's anything here. I think Brendan Schofield should have that bike. I think the rule should be changed to be more money than double the MSRP because that bike probably is worth more. And I think you'll see that rule change down the road. But other than that, this doesn't add up. It doesn't add up from many sides. That's all I got. Brian Deegan Claimgate. I'm Steve Mathis. It's my first YouTube video, maybe my last. I'm out.